Hey guys, so we're here at the part two of the arrow quiver uh, tutorial here for you. Uh, and then starting next week, hopefully I'll be back to my TARDIS building. So if you're waiting for that, stay tuned. But for now, we're gonna talk about arrow. And the arrow quiver, if you remember, we got to this point, we had it all pretty much done except for the bottom half. One thing I didn't mention before is I use EVA foam, cut it out, <laughs> and I use that for the bottom. I'm just waiting for my glue gun to heat up here and then I'll quickly apply that. And that will basically just give a bottom to this, uh, which would also allow it to be, uh, just give it a little stability. I hot glued in only because um, it usually forms just fine. The hot glue, this particular hot glue really solidifies quite nice. Plus it gives it a softer bottom uh, for any arrows that you can put in there. So if you can use arrow shafts or if you're going to use dowels or whatnot, it's gonna go in there. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much why I do it that way. Plus it also gives a nice solid bottom for when you actually put the um, quadrure around it which will be the next big part of this. So um, I'm gonna go through all the parts. I'm gonna go through all the things that you're gonna need for the, for the straps and for the bottom of this. The straps are pretty much what this whole tutorial is gonna take place for, um, for you to see. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get started here and, and hopefully you, you enjoy everything you see. All right, so as you can see here, I am going through and gluing the bottom and just kind of fixing up a little touch up places here. Hot glue is really great for that. Anyway, so getting on to, if you remember the scrap piece of, of Cordura that I used before, just getting that ready for the end cap. Signing it up, making sure everything's good there. Also making the back strap with the Velcro. I know it's a bit fast forward here, but you can just quickly see as I make the rectangular piece there as well. Of course, I ran out of thread. <laughs> so I could put a piece of belt Velcro on the back of that strap, and I figured out I drew a chalk to get the right angle because again, it is tapered. So sewed that up, sewed that on, burned off the excess as well. Did a test fit, made sure it went well there. Then I seal off the bottom as well. Make a couple little tweaks to the, making sure that, just gonna making sure that it all fits on nice and smooth, nice and nice, that it covers up everything and it leaves it fairly flush. Then we move on, we do the top strap. And in which case, I ran away from the camera here, I apologize, but basically I cut away the uh, pieces there so I can pull it into the, that area, making sure that it would fit a one and a half inch wide piece of nylon. The strap, main straps are one and a half inch and then you have one inch for the Y strap for that quiver as well. I'll oh, just make sure it's all nice and tight. You have two, <laughs> I did it really quick to show there, I apologize, but there's two tri-glides, one D-ring, all plastic black. Here's the leather. I chose, I had two different hides I used and I, I they're definitely green and the real ones on the show are green, but I wanted one that can look kind of brown in some light, so they are olive. This one that I'm using here is olive. I used my ruler to make sure I cut that out. And then I make sure they fit the three pieces there, which I'll put in the description what the sizes are. And I use a little bit of glue, which was stuck a little bit <laughs> to get out. Um, put that on, and this just holds the leather a little bit more in place, so when I stitch it down, it doesn't kind of deviate or jump away from everything. Because you do have to do three stitch lines. The longest one here is probably the most interesting to make sure. Put it all down. Again, I did use lambskin here. The real show one uses cow, but I prefer the lamb. So then you do one side, then you do the other side, and then you do the middle. That holds on very well. So again, there's three pieces. And so the main piece, that, the main strap that goes around you, and there's a strap that kind of um, folds over and holds the main strap to the back part of the main strap. <laughs> and then there's that piece that goes towards the back and the quiver. And then as you're looking here, just getting them all done one piece at a time, making sure there's the least amount of defects as possible. I mean, it's never 100% perfect, and you can tell I <laughs> the tablecloth was not a good idea to be using the sewing machine on because you can see it definitely moving. Uh, still worked out well. So then I do my pin straps. Oh, there we go. This is me putting the Velcro on, actually. So you're going to have hook and loop. And then, there you go. Hook and loop to strap it to the actual quiver and then stitch around the D-ring. Then the smaller pieces, there's a piece of hook 
on the inside flap and then it rolls, folds over to a loop part so that it actually hooks, hooks around the D-ring. I can always post up some pictures too if that is not enough explanation for you as well. The last piece um, is fairly just straight. But then you do have to attach both of those pieces, the kind of inverted one, one down, one up, in order to have the, right there, the Sam Brown rivet, or the Chicago screw, sorry. And put those together. Now here's the one inch pieces. There's three pieces of those. If I believe right, it's five and a half inches, and then a 10 and a quarter inches, and then about a two inch one. They all both connect with two tri-glides. As you can see here, putting the tri-glides on. Make sure they're stitched as well as possible. And then you start to actually have the quiver taking shape, the straps taking shape, because otherwise you need this Y piece, otherwise it will just slide around. There we go, attaching it up. And getting it ready for the actual test fit, which is probably one of the most stressy parts of it <laughs> to make sure everything's good. And attaching it to the main strap there as well. But yeah, so here we go. Let's uh, let's give it a let's do the finishing touches and give it a pop it on our back there. All right, so I've got the straps all done. I'm gonna look like this, kind of like a big giant T at this point. We have the main strap, which folds over with Velcro. We have the bottom, which is on the D ring. We have the mid Y section has two hinged uh, tri-glides. Then we have the back bit. We have the Chicago screwed joint and the wrap around to hook onto the D-ring over there. The last thing you're gonna do to this guy here, so again, we have the loop here and we have a loop down here with Velcro in it. Um, that has a piece of Velcro to hold it as well. And that's just this little piece here that I do. Um, I did see it on one of the screen used ones, but I, um, in, in a photo, but I don't know if it's current or if it was photo, I don't know. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and it's going to sit at the back here, fold in, which will also give dark green on the inside. That way I don't have to just have warbler sitting there. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so we got it all done. You have your straps. I'm just going to feed that through. Go through it there. We're going to try it on, make sure it fits. Got a mic cord in the way. There we go. This goes here. This wraps around. Goes into here. And you can adjust that to make it as tight as you like. Oops, actually, hold on a second. Let's do one thing. So I got that part in here. And this part has to feed through this guy. It's gonna sit diagonally on my piece of valve I put there. All right, now we're gonna try it on to make sure everything's fitting right. it up, Let's bring it around, fold over this side, you might have to adjust a few things yourself to figure out where you want things to fit as you do it, there you go. Fit that with some arrows and you're done. Pretty stoked with it, pretty happy with it. It's one of my favorite things to make. Uh, I am making a few for a limited run, so if you're interested, be sure to contact me uh, in the comments below or on my Facebook fan page. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, you wanna know more about it, ask me down in the comments below. Um, hopefully you can find everything. And if you take a look at doing this yourself, please let me know if you've built one yourself as well. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out my Zoom Cal giveaway. That will happen very soon as we are almost 150 subscribers away from hitting to 2000 mark in which that giveaway will happen. Guys, thank you so much for, for liking, for subscribing, for sharing. But as always, thanks for watching.